Good morning, one Scott with Scottman, and it's a cloudy but not too bad of a day here in Salzburg. I'm gonna be taking the bus to the Hauptbahnhof. I'm gonna get some breakfast over at the main train station, and then go on a little side trip this morning. All right, made it to the main train station, so I'm gonna go buy a ticket really quick for the S1, and should have time to get breakfast. Train, the train I'm gonna board is gonna leave at eight o'clock. All right, welcome to Oberndorf. It's located about 25 to 26 miles north of Salzburg via the S1 train. There's a site I want to check out here, which I plan on only being here for about an hour or so, but we'll also explore the, the town a little bit too. Although it's cloudy out right now, this is beautiful. Like you, you can see the the mountains way off in the distance, and, it, and we're walking along the Salzach River, yep, same river which comes from Salzburg. And a little fun fact: on the other side of the river, that's Germany. Because yeah, at the, this point of the river, this is where uh, the river divides Austria on this side and Germany over there. And there's a couple bridges. One over there and another one over that way, which you can take to walk over the over to Germany or vice versa. And here we are. This is the uh, Stille Nacht Kapelle, or in English, that is the Silent Night Chapel. Back on December 24. 1818, Joseph Moore and Franz Xavier Gruber sang and performed Silent Night for the very first time here. Moore was the one who wrote the song and the music was played, was pl played by Gruber. Gruber was an organist where, where Moore was a was a parishioner. However, there was no organ available so they decided to play the song for the first time with only a guitar and vocals and just think yeah, this is absolutely beautiful although this chapel wasn't here when they first performed the song this was the site of St. Nicholas Church Unfortunately, it was demolished in the early part of the 20th century, and they built this beautiful chapel here in 1937. In fact, in 1992, a exact replica of this chapel was built in Frankenmuth, Michigan, in the United States. And if you watch my YouTube, if you watch my YouTube channel a lot, you know how much I film in the city of Frankenmuth. So it's almost surreal that I'm here right now. Because, yeah, I've been many times to the Silent Night Chapel in Frankenmuth, but first time that I've ever been to the original. So this is really awesome right now. In fact, every Christmas Eve at, at, at 5 p.m., people gather here at the chapel to, to sing the song Stille Nacht, or Silent Night. And in fact, at the, at the same chapel in Frankenmuth, uh, they, they do the same thing at the chapel. Uh, the chapel in Frankenmuth, that is located near Browner's Christmas Wonderland, just on the south side of Frankenmuth.
But yeah, still can't believe I've finally made it to the original Silent Night Chapel, especially if, with all the times I've been to the to the to the replica and in Frankenmuth, all my different trips to Frankenmuth. Yep, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk briefly across into Germany and then back over to Oberndorf and then I need to get back to the train station and go back to Salzburg. And as we cross that bridge, we are now in, in Germany. But this is the this is the of uh, the town of Laufen. The town is paired with with Oberndorf. However, the two towns were separated into different countries after after the time when uh, Napoleon ruled here. Because back in the day, these be all to, all together, but. Under a treaty, though, Oberndorf went to Austria, while Laufen went to uh, Bavaria. And now we're back in Austria. train station now don't have too much further to go but that was pretty cool how I was able to to simply walk over into Germany and then back into Austria in a matter of minutes <laughs> with the uh, with the Schengen zone it's like I, I, I didn't have to show a passport or anything like that to cross the border and back <laughs> so I'm sure they although it was kind of sad to see to see both Oberndorf and Laufen separated back in the 19th century, but I feel like they were reunited in a way when the Schengen Zone came into effect. But yeah, in case you're not sure what the Schengen Zone is, it's basically, it's, it's a zone of many countries including Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Slovakia, France, and, and, the, and the Netherlands. That's not all the countries. By the way, but there's quite a few, uh, quite a few more, even like even like Switzerland as well. But basically, it allows you to, once you enter the Schengen zone, you in most cases you don't have to show your passport when you're going in between the other Schengen zone countries. However, with like the United Kingdom's out of the Schengen zone and Croatia, so if you go into those countries, there is passport there is passport control there. <laughs> Back in Salzburg, back here at the at the uh, uh, Hauptbahnhofer main train station, and I enjoyed Germany so much, and I got to see so little of it this morning that why not go back? So, <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the today? Oh, it's kind of cloudy and might rain. Uh, we're gonna be making a day trip over to uh, Berchtesgaden. It's a, it's a little. It's a little pocket of Germany that kind of bends or dives its way into Austria a little bit. It's very, very beautiful there. Although it won't get the best of views with it being cloudy with rain chances, but oh well. But I'm going to be doing the Eagle's Nest tour. So I just got to go to where bus 840 boards, which is at platform or stop G, which should be... I was told by the TI it's over at stop, yeah, it's stop G, it's in this general area. So if, 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 if you're going to a Berchtesgaden from, from Salzburg, all you have to do, if you want to take a, a bus, you take bus 840, it, it starts here, there's a few stops even in Salzburg too on its way, on its way to uh, Berchtesgaden. Bus 840 comes over here and if you look at the times, 
they, they have plenty of, of stop opp opportunities, and it shows all the different. Oh, that's wrong bus. <laughs> it shows all the different stops it makes. To board the bus, uh, we just pay we we pay the bus driver the, the ticket, and then or or pay the bus driver for a ticket, and then it'll take take us the rest of the way. So, so the bus stop for eight for bus eight forty is just over there, and and then. Where is that and related to the hop on hop? It's right over there. All right, we've made it to uh, Bechtesgaden. But the tour doesn't start for another uh, hour and 50 minutes. I'll, I'll, I'm going to head over to the Tourist Information Center over there to purchase my tickets, though. And then I'll just walk around for a little bit. I'll need to grab lunch, too. I might just get, like, Burger King or something. All right, just... Uh, just paid for the uh, for the Eagles Nest historic tour. I have an hour and a half before I have to come back over here to to meet with the tour group. So, but yeah, just yeah, just learned that it's a holiday here in Bavaria. So not a lot of things are really open, but it's not really raining right now. So I'm just gonna walk around and explore a little bit. Up on the hilltop here, we have uh, the main town area. It's really nice. Yeah, this is really impressive. <laughs> I'm gonna head back to the train station and also have a Burger King. Probably get a burger for once. So, oh, haven't had one in a while, so. Guess I think I guess I'm American for once. Uh, although if I if I would have found a uh, kebab place, I would have gone there instead. But I need something fast because I want to make sure I make the tour. All right, time for a quick lunch. Got a whopper. That was pretty good. I'd have to say I haven't been to, I hadn't been to Burger King in more than several years. So. It's hard, hard to tell if I would like it or not, but not bad, although I still would have rather had donor kebab. Oh well. Alright, gonna be getting ready to get on the bus shortly to go up to the Eagle's Nest. Side and not quite to talk too much out there just because it's probably gonna be really windy and cold.
Yeah, as you can tell, it's really cold up here, but we're at the top of the Eagle's Nest. We're gotta be at least over 1,800 meters high or like around 6,017 feet. <laughs> this is amazing. I should probably go back down, it's starting to sprinkle a little more. Alright, so we're at the top of the eagle's nest, well, almost, almost near the top of the eagle's nest. I just came back from, from the top, or up near the cross, but this is just amazing up here. Except, uh, that's the uh, Karl Stein house, and, it, and it currently it's a, it's, a re, it's a restaurant now, but Adolf Hitler, that he even came up here several times, although not very often, just because he, he was afraid of heights. After the war, uh, they originally wanted to tear all the former Hitler buildings down over over here, over here on the Ober Salzburg, but a petition was filed to keep this building still st still standing, but turn into a restaurant. As long as 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 the Burghof, which is Hit which was Hitler's home up up in the Ober Salzburg, well, to make sure that that was torn down. And I have to say, it's, I think they made a great choice because it's amazing up here. I'm not going to be eating here, but it's a spectacular view. But yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm here on a on a guided tour, which started back down a, a back down in a back to Scotland. So right now we're just getting some time to just roam around for a little while. But I have to head back down the elevator and like. 20 25 minutes and then be up back with the rest of the group and continue the tour. Yep. So we're inside one of the old rooms here. I gotta get back down stairs momentarily, but really quick. I yeah. If you look out there, uh, you can see a, a, little, a little bit of the uh, of the uh, Gunnick Sea. It's a very beautiful lake in the whole park area. But yeah. Yeah, this started out as a tea house, and it was built in 1937 and 1952, several years after after the Nazis were defeated. It was open to the public, and now it's a restaurant. Yeah, we're down at the documentation center right now. You can see the Eagle Stats all the way up there. They have all the information inside in German, but they have pamphlets here to where you can read the English versions. But yeah, the bunkers are kind of closed right now. But you probably saw the construction, but it's like, yeah, everything's currently closed down by, uh, there's about a few miles of bunker systems underneath here, which is, very interesting. Well, that was that was a pretty cool tour. But yeah, we got lucky with the eagle's nest at the top. That although it wasn't the best of weather day, I was able to get some good views from up there. For what the tour guide was telling us, uh, it's like it's a 50/50 whether you can get great views from up there or. I was gonna try to see if I could catch the early bus <laughs> back to Salzburg, but yeah, it's, it's, it's departing now. Fair, why not try it, but got another hour till head back to Salzburg. <laughs> but yeah, very interesting up, up there, I have, to, I have to say. So anyway, now that I'm back over by this river here, here, here in the town, yeah, I, I highly recommend the, the tour. It's, it's about 55 euros and they recommend that you reserve ahead of time but uh, but you pay you pay in, inside the tourism information center just before the tour starts and it, it takes you up to the, to the eagle's nest so, but although yeah we normally don't go up there first but they did just because they knew that the visibility was gonna get a little bit iffy let's just say that so they kind of switched things around we went to the eagle's nest first 
and then to the documentation center. But of course, because as you saw, the bunkers were under construction. We didn't go in there, unfortunately, because that, that would have been pretty cool to check out. But yeah, as I was trying to stay up there, it's it's interesting how, how they built those bunker systems underneath a lot of the buildings that were there until they were mostly uh, destroyed by, by Allied forces in, in 1945. But definitely something though. Like the whole area of uh, of uh, Berchtesgaden and, uh, and also the Ober Salzburg up 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 there. It's, it's like a lot of a lot of history there, and of course, lots of spectacular views. All right, I'm just gonna be hanging around the uh, Berchtesgaden area for a little while until the 6:15 p.m. bus A40 heads back to Salzburg. All right, back at the main train station. I'm gonna head back in. I'm gonna head back into town first. But I'm gonna take one of the city buses, get something quick to eat, and then I'm probably gonna call this a video. All right, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Gotta eat as much donor kebab as I can while I'm over here. Oh, that donor kebab was so good. Although I got one in the in the non-de-room form this fun, this time, but this is my third one on this trip. I might consider getting one more, maybe near the end of my trip. We'll, we'll wait and see, though, but yeah, it's such an awesome day today. We're going to Oberndorf to see the Stille Nacht Kapelle, or Silent Night Chapel, and then head over to uh, Berchtesgaden, and got to go up to the Eagle's Nest and do the tour. That was pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to be leaving Salzburg in the morning. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog today. If you want to watch more of my vlogs, if you, uh, click on this video link over here. Uh, thank you for watching, and this is Scott, or the Scott Man, signing out. Just in front of Mozart's birthplace.